Hello everyone. We're gonna go into um, something a little bit different. Um, I'm gonna actually attempt a podcast. So um, the first one, I'm well, I'm gonna hopefully name the series um, something like Beyond the Block or something like that. Obviously, it's going to be uh, very Minecraft based. Now, the first episode is being recorded after a well-known. Um, Shall we say, I wouldn't say series, it's a competition basically on Twitch called Twitch Rivals. Now, Twitch Rivals is a very inter interesting concept. They go and do all different um, like competitions. So they do Fall Guys, they do Among Us, they do Rocket League, they do League of Legends, and they do Minecraft. Now, with Minecraft 1, Let's just go and say it's rather um, disorganized. Shall we say, oh, I've moved my mouse. Why am I inverted mouse as well? Oh, okay, that's weird. Um, <laughs> proves I've played this game a while. Um, but yeah, so it's one of those bits where I'm just going, this has gone on now. And I think we've had um, five rounds. Of Twitch Rivals. And every single time it changes. Now, obviously, you can understand the reason why it has to change. It has to change because of keeping it fresh, keeping it interesting. That's perfectly understandable. However, every single time they change it, they don't seem to know what they're doing. Now, I'm going at this point of view as a follower, as a viewer of this. Um, for those of you who do not know, I am a moderator for one of the competitors in Twitch Rivals. And as I say, I'm going off of the experience that I have seen over the past few Twitch Rivals. Now, I was there on the first Twitch Rivals. The first Twitch Rivals was um, a Minecraft advancement bingo. That was all it was. It was just solely that. Now, that had obviously some flaws because you had to go and get the first square, you get a point. The first row, you get a point. And the first to complete a full board, you would get points. So I think it was like, you know, three for the first, two for the second, one for the third. Or it was one for everyone else. I can't remember the exact scoring. And that worked really, really well. Or at least me as a viewer, I felt that, that worked really, really well. The competitors enjoyed it as well from the reactions we saw and from seeing streams after the competition with Tango and him going and saying things like, you know, it was good because they got the board like a week early so they could be there and they can go, right, okay, so you're good at this part. So we're going to give you that job. You're good at grinding things. So we're going to give you that job. And it was divvied out and everyone had a role. And it worked obviously really, really well. Team Hermitcraft uh, North America won the American series. And that was against four teams. The second Twitch Rivals then came around. Again, it was an advancement bingo. And again, the Hermitcraft team did quite well. However, this time, they added in then afterwards a scavenger hunt. And every single time after that, it has been bingo and scavenger hunt until today's. Now, today is the 6th of April, 2021. And as I say, I have literally just got done watching this stream. And... It, it's one of those, if it was just like, the teams didn't know what they were doing. 
until today. They've been given no heads up of how to prepare, what they were doing, or anything like this. It was quite literally today at the event, and then they go and say it's going into three categories a raid, a scavenger hunt, and a fight. They had no idea what they're doing. And if I'll be perfectly honest, it sometimes feels that that's what Twitch Rivals is like as well. And I'm not trying to go and badmouth them because obviously they're still learning. It's very, very difficult, I will admit, to go and try and make a balanced competition in Minecraft. I'm not badmouthing this at all. But from a viewer's point of view, it seems a bit hectic, shall we say. So, with today's, as I say, we have the raid. Now, if somebody goes and says to you, a raid in Minecraft, that's when you go and get Bad Omen, you've got to then defend your villagers, you go and have the pillagers coming and attacking you. That's a raid. You then also have the raiding of different areas. So you can go end raiding and raid end cities. You could raid a woodland mansion and kill all the inhabitants in there. You can raid an ocean monument. That was what they had. Now, every single team had the, exactly the same seed, it was exactly the same map. So they're all obviously in the same boat. The one hint that Twitch Rivals gave was the compass will point towards the Ocean Monument. Now, how many people know how to make a compass? It's four iron and a redstone. A lot of people don't know that because they don't ever use them. Because, let's be honest, they really don't have much use in game. A normal compass will lead you to spawn, or zero, 0, I believe. If it goes and clicks onto a lodestone, it then goes and points you towards that lodestone. So, this one goes and directs you to the nearest ocean monument. Okay. The team who I was watching and supporting, which was Hermitcraft North America, went for compass. Before they had even got the compass, a team had already went and defeated the monument. Now you could go and say that was rather lucky, but by the sounds of the official Twitch stream at the end of the whole event, they were using a texture pack that allowed them to locate it easily. So obviously gave them an unfair advantage, and they got penalised for it. So, fair play to Twitch Spawn. Sorry, fair play to Twitch Rivals for doing that. And again, I will commend them on that. But this is the thing. They knew that in the first round. And nothing was said then to this team. This team then obviously continued to use that exploit through the other two maps. The one that you should have gone and done on that one is message them and says, you need to turn this off. Because there was enough waiting time in between each round for them to have gone and disabled it and booted up a vanilla instance. So the reason why I bring this up I've organised competitions before on my own Minecraft server. I'm going to be organising more competitions in the future. If it's an exploit, you nip it in the bud quickly. The reason being is because it's obviously what happened with Twitch Rivals is they penalised 18 points off of this team at the end of Rivals. 
So this team went from first to third. Now, a lot of you will probably be going and saying, well, that's fair. Because obviously they cheated, they deserved the penalty. Yes, but that should have only been done on the first round. So what happened was, rivals took off six points from this team for every round. So if they got first on the first round and they got full points, they then lost six points. On the second round, they could be last and have now lost six points. And then on the final round, they could be fourth and have now lost six points. Whereas if they'd nipped it in the bud early, then they could have still stood a chance instead of penalizing at the end. That's just my opinion. The other one of being as well is it's with this rivals. Um, it wasn't how I would feel was structured. As I say, it was three events that were launched on the day. The first event was Raid the Ocean Monument. Okay. Second was uh, Scavenger Hunt. Now, every other scavenger hunt they have done prior to this one, all of the items are there on display. You don't have to go into a set order to gather these items. This time, they decided to limit the players to nine items at a time. So there was a board. Um, hang on, let me show you. So, that there, of what you are seeing in front of me, those were some of the items that were in the scavenger hunt. Now, whilst the competition was on, if you were going out into the wild and you are gathering resources, you had a book full of a list of all the items that you needed. And there was about like three pages of items. So there was a lot. You had a long time limit, that's fair enough. However, this was the problem. I'm going to go and, as I say, just go and show you how the setup was. So, there was a hopper in the ground here, like this. There was a board, and any of those nine items could be thrown into the hopper. Any other ones that were in your book, you wouldn't be able to throw in until that board had been cleared, until there was a space. So, you can go and see there, there's quite a few rare items, which were on the first few pages. So, you've got the Enchanted Golden Apple. You've got the Trident. You've got Gilded Blackstone. Now, bear in mind, Gilded Blackstone, you can only harvest with, with Silk Touch. Not many teams have gone have got Silk Touch in the allotted time. A Trident is a 0.04% drop rate. The reason why I know this, rule our world. That is a series I am streaming over on Twitch with two teammates. I was the one who went for a trident. It took me almost two weeks. So two sessions of three hours to go and try and get a trident. These guys had to go and do it in less than an hour. Enchanted Golden Apple. I don't even know the rate of that one. But again, it's not a common item. So why were these put earlier in the book of where then all of a sudden your board starts clogging up? Oh, and pig step as well. You've got to go and find a bastion and hope there's a pig step generated into there. There was a netherite hoe as well, which I didn't put onto this board. But that was another one of its where you just go, this is a little bit not thought out. The ones that you should have done, the order I feel at least, should have been done 
get the most common ones with the most numbers. Because it just wasn't one slime ball, one piece of beef. It was like four slime balls, four beef, four rabbit, six spider eyes, things like that. Get those in the front of the book and then get the least common ones. Don't get blocking up the board because then, as I say, if it was you have what a lot of the streamers went and fed back on and went and says, hang on a minute, we go and progressed and then all of a sudden hit a wall because it's we've now come to the point of where there's still those common items further in the book but our board is just so locked up we can't do anything about it so why was it changed it's that age-old question of if it ain't broke why did you try and fix it it didn't need fixing So why was it changed? You know, again, it's only just what I feel. If you guys feel different, please let me know down in the comments. But it doesn't, to me, make sense. I know it's meant to be a challenge. I know it's meant to be difficult and all things like this because there is a lot of money on the line. However, you also need to go and make it fun. And when you start going and implementing things of where it stops the streamer from being able to progress or stops the person from being able to progress further, that can have a knock-on effect. Again, it's just my feelings. And then we go on to the third and final round. Now, the third and final round was... It was questionable, shall we say. I don't see why it was given such a long, a lot of time. I feel like the developers of the Rivals, or the organisers of Rivals, didn't think it through fully. But the final round of Rivals was the... It was basically, it was a wither fight. So it was a PvE fight. And you were bought into the same spawn type area that you were always bought into. You were given hay bales so you could make food. You were given an enchanting area with an enchanted table that was always full of lapis. You was given an anvil. Your starter tools were a pickaxe and a bow, but no arrows. Arrows were generated. Um, in the middle of the spawn, they just randomly like kept popping up at random times. You were given logs or wood. Again, all of the, all of this just keeps regenerating, so you you never run out of resources. And then you were given a diamond mine. In the diamond mine, you had obviously diamond ore for you to mine, and you had cobwebs and soul sand. Now. Again, the idea, yeah, you know, it would work. But at the same point, you can also feel a little bit of um, a bottleneck. So it, again, it was strategy was needed. Some teams had a good strategy of keeping one person behind who was consistently like mining the diamonds to go and get the XP, go and making new armor, enchanting it to then go and give the teammates who are out fighting the wither. Oh, and sorry, there was also another, there's a wither skeleton pit that gives you 100% drops on the skulls. That was the part I missed. So all of this is a really good idea. I really, really liked how it began. It was about a 40 minute, I believe, fight. And in this time, what you had to go and do was going in, grab your resources, so you get your armor, your weapons, get all of that that you can, gather skulls, gather soul sand, and then you had to go out of the spawn building. Now this is a key port point here. You had to go out of the spawn building. The only place you could summon a wither was on a dedicated bedrock platform. Okay? 
So that to me immediately goes and says, that's where you need to fight the wither. So it's not trapping it. It's not putting it under the bedrock so it suffocates. You can't go and do any of this. It needs to be on that platform and fought outside. And I have a feeling Team North America felt the same. The reason why I say this is because for most of the battle, they were summoning one weather out at a time and they were fighting it outside. Now, the chat started going and throwing suggestions in of what other teams were doing. Other teams were dragging it into the spawn building and they were trapping it where the enchanting table was because obviously the wither could get into there, it gets trapped under the roof and as long as that player who has the wither aggro on it is still alive, that wither's not going anywhere. Meaning then that the team can just come in and just slice and dice it and keep on doing it. Now, again, this is where I feel that Twitch Rivals went and didn't think this through. I think it's an oversight because that to me feels like you are cheating. You're not fighting the wither. You're cheat. You know, you're cheesing it. That's basically the same as putting it into the bedrock under the end portal and slicing it. The whole point of this competition, what I believed, was to show who was the best. And you are competing against the other best teams, as it were, to see who comes out on top. Now, again, I feel like, does it mean that you're the best of it's when you find an exploit? You find an exploit and it's just like you're making it work for you. I don't feel that. I don't think so. The best would be the team that goes and did it properly. But again, Twitch rivals didn't go and specify. So the teams that went and did the trapping were just using initiative. The saying, work smarter, not harder, comes to mind on that point. But at the same point, you go, where's the line? This team that got penalized because of a resource pack, well, they weren't told they couldn't use it. But I don't know. This is, again, what I want feedback from you guys from. And yes, I did just go and smack my tooth on a dog. So yeah, Twitch Rivals, I feel, has evolved from the first time we saw it. From the first time they went and made that Minecraft bingo competition and where Team North America went and won. And I'm not going and making this video because I'm upset that Team North America lost or, you know, anything like this. I am not doing that in the slightest. I am just here to go and say, I feel that it has changed, but the developers of it need to go and just stop for a moment and look and think. Think about what worked well. The first ever one that, it, that you're like, you know, the first ever one they organized was Advancement Bingo with teams of four. There were only four teams competing against each other. Have the rules set out in stone so there are no grey areas. You don't want people using data packs or resource packs or mods like Optifine. Go and express it straight away. If you want them fighting a mob in a certain area, express that straight away. 
Now, as I say, I don't know if the thing with the wither was meant to be fought exactly on that platform. I know they had to be spawned there, but going and having them dragged into the spawn and trapping them, I don't understand that one. I don't understand that logic. I don't know. Am I being a little bit too rash there? Is it bad that I want it to go back to the way it was, of where life was simpler, as it were? Of where the, the rules were there, you know, if it was the first ever one, they were told they weren't allowed to use Optifine. And they had basically four hours to gear up and tick off the advancements. That was it. And that's what makes me wonder why it was changed of when that worked. But I don't know. I'd like your opinion, guys, and uh, as I say, I'm going to go and do a few more of these, of just different ones. We're going to go and, like, deep delve into snapshots. We're going to go and do looking at um, Minecraft blocks and real blocks, if I can go and sort things like that. And generally have a chat and I also may go and have some people joining me at other points um, but yeah guys that's just my review that I wanted to go and sort of do of Twitch Rivals um, obviously if you go and haven't watched it I'll go and leave a link in the description to the main Rivals channel um, and the VOD should be up there um, after this video goes live so you can go and watch it there and obviously if you want to go and watch any of the teams that competed the Twitch Rivals goes and has all of that information. So, um, thank you guys, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.